do. Every morning we brush our teeth. What is the evidence that the brushing of teeth does us any good in cavities? So you start wondering. As the earth turns on the orbit, there's an edge between light and dark. And along that edge, all the people, along that edge, you know, who are doing the same ritual, <laughs> for no good reason. Just like in the Middle Ages, they had other rituals. And you try to picture this perpetual line of toothbrushers going around the earth. It's to take the world from another point of view. Now, it may be, may well be that brushing teeth is a very good thing because it gets rid of cavities. And you can ask, you can find out whether it does or it doesn't by trying to find out. Now, you can ask your dentist. He says, of course. And you say, how about evidence? I have not found the evidence from dentists because they just learned it in school. Now, I'm not trying to argue that it's good or bad to brush teeth. What I'm trying to argue for is to think about things from a new point of view. It's interesting that some people find science so easy and others find it kind of dull and difficult. In the case of science, I think that one of the things that make it very difficult is it takes a lot of imagination. It's very hard to imagine all the crazy things that things really are like. I find myself trying to imagine all kinds of things all the time and I get a kick out of it, just like a runner gets a kick out of sweating. <laughs> I get a kick out of thinking about these things. Uh, I can't stop. I mean, I, you could make, I could talk forever. But I don't want to take this stuff seriously. I think we should just have fun imagining it, not worry about it. There's no teacher going to ask you questions at the end. Otherwise, it's a horrible subject. Nothing's really as it seems. We're used to get, you know, hot and cold, and all that hot and cold is is the speeds that the atoms are jiggling. If they jiggle more, it corresponds to hotter and colder is jiggling less. Uh, oxygen, for instance, in the air would like to be next to carbon, and if they get it near each other, they snap together. If you can get it faster by heating it up somehow, somewhere, somehow, they come close enough to the carbon and snap in, and that gives a lot of jiggly motion, which might hit some other atoms, making those go faster so they can climb up and bump against other carbon atoms, and they jiggle, and they make mothers jiggle, and you get a terrible catastrophe. That catastrophe is a fire. If you take a, a fairly wide rubber band and put it between your lips and pull it out, you'll certainly notice it's hotter. And if you then hold it out there and let it in, you'll notice it's cooler. At least you'll notice a certain difference in whether, what happens when you expand it, when you contract it. And that's, I've always found rubber bands fascinating to think that when they're sitting on an old package of papers for a long time, holding those papers together, it's done by a perpetual pounding, pounding, pounding of the atoms against these chains to hold them, trying to kink them and trying to kink them year after year. Well, rubber bands don't last that long, but anyhow, for a long time, trying to hold this whole thing together. The world is a dynamic mess of jiggling things, if you look at it right. And if you magnify it, you can hardly see anything anymore because everything is jiggling and they're all in patterns and they're all lots of little balls. And, it's lucky that we have such a large scale view of everything that we can see them as things without having to worry about all these little atoms all the time. I don't like honors. I appreciate it for the work that I did and for people who appreciate it. And I notice that other physicists use my work. I don't need anything else. I don't think there's any sense to anything else. The prize is the pleasure of finding the thing out, the kick in the discovery, the observation of other people use it. Those are the real things. The honors are unreal to me. I don't believe in honors. When I was in high school, one of the first honors I got was to be a member of the Arista, which is a group of kids who got good grades. Hmm? And you were, everybody wanted to be a member of the Arista. And when I got into the Arista, I discovered that what they did in their meetings was to sit around to discuss who else was worthy to join this wonderful group that we are. Okay, so we sat around trying to decide who it was who would get to be allowed in to this arista. This kind of thing bothers me psychologically for one or another reason I don't understand myself. Honors, and from that day to this, always bothered me. Bothered me. I had trouble with when I became a member of the National Academy of Science, I had ultimately to resign because there was another organization, most of whose time was spent in choosing who was illustrious enough to, join, to be allowed to join us in our organization, including such questions as 
we physicists have to stick together because there's a very good chemist that they're trying to get in and we haven't got enough room for so What's the matter with chemists? The whole thing was rotten because the purpose was mostly to decide who could have this honor. Okay, I don't like honors. You asked me if an ordinary person, by studying hard, would get to be able to imagine these things like I imagine. Of course, I was an ordinary person who studied hard. There's no miracle, people. It just happens they got interested in this thing and they learned all this stuff. They're just people. There's no talent, a special miracle ability to understand quantum mechanics or a miracle ability to imagine electromagnetic fields that comes without practice and reading and learning and study. So if you say you take an ordinary person who's willing to devote a great deal of time and study and work and thinking and mathematics and time, then he's become a scientist. I gotta stop somewhere. I'll leave you something to imagine. <laughs>